Hey there folks, so it's time yet again for another backlight kit video. Uh, so this time I have the brand new, well I guess they're always brand new at the time I do the video, aren't they? Um, the 2.6 inch IPS kit from Cloud Game Store. Uh, this is, as far as I can tell, pretty much the same kit they have for the Game Boy Pocket. It even literally says GBP 2.6 on the converter board. But the difference is, well, it has the same screen, but it comes with a new lens. And you also get a uh, nice little bracket to hold things in place. Extra ribbon cable to connect the converter board to the DMG front board. I'm just going to leave that right there. Ribbon cable, ribbon cable, and then the front board itself. Uh, one of the things that caught my eye with this kit, at least, was that the uh, front board already has the speaker soldered on. Um, now, that soldering isn't, isn't the greatest. In fact, I'm probably going to redo it, because that wasn't even soldered down. But, uh, <laughs> hopefully that's not a problem with... Um, with the rest of these uh, but it is something to look out for if you get one of these things installed and you for some reason don't have any sound let me before we begin I guess we'll go ahead and get started with that um, but it does use this 2.6 inch IPS screen that they've been using for their Game Boy Color and Game Boy Pocket mods I'm actually really fond of this screen if I had any complaints it's that the brightness is a little bit on the low side compared to like the Q5 screens but everything else about it is phenomenal, and I'm, I've been really pleased with the installs in the other consoles. So I'm thinking this one should be no exception. Let me go ahead and get that tinned up. Get that tinned up. And then we will drop that in there. And I'm going to redo that one while I'm here. Because that one has some nasty solder joints on it. That's not going too well. Let's strip that down. Now, my understanding is normally this sort of kit does not have a uh, soldering requirement, whereas the other DMG kits do. Uh, however, don't count on that because even though there's no soldering required, here I am doing some soldering, so. But then again, if you ordered one of these kits and it arrived like mine would, you should reach out to the manufacturer, because that ain't, or the seller, because that ain't right. But that looks quite a bit better, so we'll go with that. Kill the soldering iron, and uh, let's get started. I wonder what that chip does. That's interesting. Usually on these front boards, all you have is the uh, diode arrays, and then, or in this case, just individual diodes, um, and then like the interface for whatever. Uh, oh, that might be. This doesn't appear to be connected to anything. I wonder why they even bothered including it. That's interesting. Like, I see no traces on this side, and I see no traces on this side. Interesting. Another thing I'm noticing, the start and select pads have solder on them, uh, whereas up, down, left, right, A and B are gold-plated. That's an interesting choice. I would think these should be gold-plated as well. There's also a spot for two capacitors. I don't know, like, they're, they're close enough together that it seems like it should be a one or the other type thing, but that's, that's still kind of weird. But that's just the speaker capacitor, so. Normally we only need one of those. All right, let's go ahead and get on with it. Tonight's donor is going to be quite the fixer-upper. Uh, hopefully all we need to do is just reshell it and drop a new screen in. 
Uh, but this thing has quite a few issues and because of the issues I won't be doing the normal power testing because I don't think the numbers will be very meaningful. Uh, I can grab some numbers after the fact but I don't think we're going to get any useful before numbers because if I just hold this thing here, it is in the game, the volume is maxed out. Oh, well there we go. My problem is my volume potentiometer. I'll have to fix that later. But, um, oh, and of course it's not doing it now. I was getting very, oh, there it goes. Very frequent flickers on the screen itself. The contrast is exceedingly unstable. Um, for some reason I have no power LED and basically all of the screw posts on the left side are broken. But hey, it works, which I guess is pretty neat for something that came out in 1989. Um, ooh, that is gummy. I guess this one in particular is a uh, later model. So it's not, not quite 1989 vintage. Um, oh wait, no, this is an early model. I was, uh, I was thinking of the other one I had on my desk. I was actually going to use this one for the video, but I couldn't get this thing, get this board working. And I think this board is fried. I, I was trying to use this in an earlier video and I was having problems with it. I tried revisiting it, still couldn't get it working. So. To the scrap bin it goes, and by scrap bin I mean parts bin to uh, donate parts for other Game Boys eventually, or not, we'll see. But anyway, you can always tell it's an early model Game Boy if the uh, screws in the back are GIS instead of the tri-wing. I suppose it's a lot easier to see when that's not all rusted over. I don't know when they switched over to the uh, Y screws, but I know it was early. Uh, maybe, maybe they made them like this for a few. Is there even a screw in there? There it is. All right, I don't know that that's coming out. stripped down. Let's go ahead and get this transferred over to the new case because this thing is disgusting and I don't want to deal with it anymore. Uh, I am going to go ahead and reshell this thing. Once you've got the two halves separated by the six screws, there are four more screws and you can go ahead and pull the back off. Now I found a nice shell in my parts bin and that is what I will use put this thing back together with. I'll pull that out, make sure there's nothing egregious going on here. There is quite a bit of corrosion on this battery terminal. I don't know that I'm gonna fix that, but I will at least touch up the solder. Uh, the donor shell is this nice blue one that was in my parts bin. I have no idea where it's from. I have totally forgotten. I'm thinking it's a funny playing shell because the uh, there's no like ridges in the battery compartment and that was something funny playing was doing. Otherwise I have no idea. It's not from our uh, other favorite vendor because there's zero branding on it. So I don't know. But either way, it seems pretty nice. I dig the color if nothing else. I'm sure I will figure out exactly where this shell is from after I film the video and uh, I'll throw a link if I can. But because there's a bunch of corrosion on this battery terminal, 
I am going to redo the solder. Nice big blob on there. Drop it out. Maybe I should just go clean that up. Actually, yeah. Screw it. Might as well do it right. Hang on. Um, I am going to pause the video for a moment and get this blue goo cleaned up. And uh, I guess while I'm at it, I'll clean up the volume wheel. And I'll be right back. All right. Could have done way better. Could have done way worse. Got the volume wheel cleaned up. Got the uh, battery terminal cleaned up. So uh, let's get that back installed. Let's get this over with. I think easiest way to do this is going to be to just melt that terminal or that ball and slip the contact back in. And there we go. Drop that in there just to make sure the alignment is good. And throw some fresh solder on there. Make sure that that's in a happy place. And I think we're all set now. Finally good to get this install going. I haven't tested it, and I definitely should have, but at least all the blue goo's gone. Alright, so here is the replacement shell. Screws. We need a power switch, otherwise that'll just drop right in there. I've got this stuff set aside. I won't be using these membranes, but I might as well use these plastics. Wasn't the uh, buttons I was planning on using, but it's what I have. And I do remember these are funny playing, so they should work. They should fit nicely. There already, yeah, we already got a metal shield in place, which means I just need to pop these screws back in. So for the volume wheel, because I'm sure I'm going to get tons of questions on this, uh, I clean that out with contact cleaner. The uh, best way to fix the problem I was experiencing would be to just replace the Jesus thing entirely, but I don't have replacements on hand. Ooh, actually, I think I do. Well, if you don't have replacements on hand, I guess contact cleaner is a good way to uh, work around that. But if you have replacements on hand, just replace it. Problem be gone at that point. Huh? Huh? Cleaning up nicely. All right. So now let's get on with the front. Normally you'd pop out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws, and then you can extract your speaker. But we're reshelling this thing. We don't need to do that. But we do need to test it before going any further. I don't want to modify this shell and get this thing glued in if we don't even know if it works. Where are my batteries? I'm going to use the other battery cover because that one has all my screws in it. And then, slip this in here. Bear with me, let me pull up the 
pictures, make sure I get the orientation correct. There's lots of little boards to connect up here. Okay. So this one goes here. We have the pins down. We snap that bail shut. We want to make sure that that, that little line on the connector is right underneath the bail. That'll fold up something like that. And connect up this next ribbon. Goes in there. Pins down. Come on. There we go. A little tight. And then, need this thing. Goes on to here. Pins down. that stack up is going to look something like that and then this part goes in the top just like that and uh, it out. Hey, look at that. I have a power LED, Nintendo logo. Let's turn the volume up, see if that works. And I have volume. One thing I've noticed with DMGs is I can usually just use the pad of my thumb to get that going. But look at that. Working nicely. We have a uh, touch sensor for brightness. And I think that's the only touch sensor there. Yeah. Could be neat to have some uh, palette control, but I'll take it. It is what it is. All right. I guess let's go ahead and get on with the install then. I'm going to, I guess we'll disconnect it from here because once this is in the shell, it's going to be hard to slip that in. And I guess I will also disconnect here. And let's go ahead and get the shell prepped. So, this thing is supposed to Oh, I screwed myself over by using this shell because this bracket doesn't work in this shell. The uh, bracket is supposed to go over the two screw posts at the top here that I don't have. I will have to design a new bracket, I guess. Or just go without. I didn't think ahead. So yeah, this bracket will go into the shell. Um, the idea is these two holes go over the two screw posts in the top, which we don't have because I guess this is one of the one of the older IPS ready shells, which already has those brackets removed or the screw posts removed. So all we have are these two screw posts for the screen, which this bracket does not give two hoots about. But we might still be able to use it anyway because the right side, we're going to try it. Because the right side lines up with here. 
Ooh, but, hang on, before I stick that down, there's a little bit of screen that we need to remove over here. Let's do that first. So on this side, side opposite the LED, Do a little bit of cutting. Where's my knife? There it is. Easiest way to do that is, well, this is IPS ready. Do we need to do any cutting? Yeah, we do. Look at the lens. The uh, edge on that side isn't lined up. So let's do some cutting. Don't need to do much. And my typical manner of cutting is just give it a, you know, we'll come back and do that later. We'll give it a score. Just a quick one. And then we'll come in and finish that score up to the sides. And then just come back and keep scoring it until we're ready to break it off. not applying very much pressure at all. About the same pressure I'd be writing with. Maybe hair more. The idea is we're only taking a little bit of material out at a time. multiple passes to get more material. These ones I'm doing a little bit harder to do fewer passes. Then we can come in with some pliers and just snap it off at the score. Oop. And as long as everything went well, it'll snap right off. And then once that's done, we can come back with the knife again and run along the edge to get rid of the uh, white stress plastic marks. Or just come back and clean that up with a marker or something, but I don't know. This seems to work just as well. We'll get an even finish with this. Perfect, but it's certainly good enough. Let's get this side too. Boom! Ta da! against the light pipe, not all the way towards the top, but pretty darn close. I will have to double check the alignment. But, should be good enough.
Oh, my problem is the LCD is not fitting because I have the tab getting in the way. I have a feeling I'm going to be in and out of this thing a few times, so instead of peeling the protector off, I'm just going to cut the tab. We'll get it later. The uh, tolerances are very tight. Tight enough that I actually think I need to do with that up. Do be careful about forcing it. Ta-da! We will do a test fit in just a moment. I'm gonna get the buttons in there because in case I got it right first try, I can probably get that off from the front. Also got these brand new membranes. Not 100% sure who makes these because they're unlabeled, and they've been floating around in my parts bin for a long enough time. But I'm fairly confident they're funny playing. careful with the screws on the left and right by the screen. We do not want to crank those down very tightly because there's no bracket or anything uh, to provide support like on OEM. Also, we can't even do those top two posts because there are no screws there. Or because there are no posts there. Can't do the top two screws. And don't forget to turn your iron off. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm out of screws. Why am I out of screws? Alright, fine. I'll use the other ones. screws. I wasn't supposed to use the uh, I was supposed to use the screws I'm screwing in now on the motherboard and the new screws on the front but they don't seem to be poking through at least not yet so I think we're gonna be good. Also that would have looked better with pink buttons but oh well here we are. Mm -hmm. 
Make sure that is in straight before trying to turn it on. Ooh, I got the alignment pretty bad. The screen needs to come down and it's tilted. Yeah. That ain't too hot. How's the left and right looking though? Could be better. Looks like it needs to come over a little bit towards the cut edge. Alright. Let's try again. I'm gonna get this aligned off camera because if you guys are using the right shell, this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so this is a uh, this is a me problem. I'll be right back. Also, while we're here, before I even get that done, let me uh, unwrap this a little bit. Got to get the touch sensor attached, and uh, trust me, it's not too complicated. It just goes pins down like everything else. Just jam that in there, and then uh, for best results, we want to stick that down to the shell. But I'm not going to do that yet because I'm. That that's going to be the last step once I get everything aligned. So, be right back. Actually, you know what? Might as well show you how I'm going to get this thing aligned. So first thing, let's just get this lens stuck down. Might have to pull everything apart to get the dust out, but so be it. Let's go in here. Just like that. And then I've already got this thing kind of pulled apart with the bracket around the LCD. Flip it on. Get to the main menu. Come on. There we go. Stick the bracket down. And then I just gotta reassemble. Again, this would have not been a problem had I chosen to use a normal shell. Not this IPS ready one, but here we go. Just we'll pop that out. And then I am just tempting fate. I'm trying to do that while it's still on. Slip that in there. Bob Jonti. Now let me go ahead and get this reassembled and I will be right there. All right, so I've got everything mostly reassembled. Let's go ahead and take care of the touch sensor this time. And uh, if you watch my videos, you know I usually save the adhesive from the inside of screen lenses. And this is exactly why. Oh, don't need that tab anymore. Just cut off a small square. Doesn't have to be perfectly sized. Especially since this is in uh, opaque shell, as in it is not transparent. Let's get that pressed on there. Ooh. I know it doesn't have to be aligned, but I can do better than that. Ah, yeah, good enough. Get that stuck down. Probably better to get this 
uh, get the adhesive applied before this thing's in the shell, but here we are. Right. Just stuck it down to the base there so I can try and pull it up from that side. on that thing too much. which is going to be super easy because we've already got basically everything else done. Just drop that in there. Fold it up. We got to fold down at the top otherwise it's going to try and poke out the top there. down. Come on. All right. We're all set. So Pokemon Yellow is not the best game to judge this with because Pokemon Yellow experiences quite a few frame drops on its own. So if there were a problem with the kit, it'd be hard to tell what's, you know, is, is it the game dropping frames or the kit. But if nothing else, I can test the buttons out. I'm happy with the D-pad. A and B are perfectly fine. can't get start or select working. And I wonder if that's because of the solder on the contacts that I was pointing out earlier. I have a hard time believing that my new membranes would be bad. But I'm going to select. Oh, there's start. Maybe, uh, I can't remember if Pokemon Yellow, if it just, if it complains that you don't have anything registered to select. Because I don't think I do. Actually, I don't even know if you can do that in this game. Let's try out something else. Ugh, how about... Pokemon Silver. Yeah, 
So there's start. You gotta, you gotta kind of press it with your thumbnail and give it a, give it a good press. And there's select. So yeah, it was working. I just forgot how to play Pokemon Yellow. Also, I'm seeing no frame drops, which is good because there shouldn't be any in Pokemon Silver. Let's uh, let's test it with the flash card. Where's my flash card? Uh oh. One moment while I find my flashcard. Oh. I found it. It wasn't that hard to find. Let's first do the scrolling bar test. Bring that in a little bit. So, I've gone through this spiel dozens of times, but one more can't hurt in case y'all haven't seen previous videos. But what's going on is this is just passing a continuous pattern through the screen. And every time this S in scrolling hits the left edge of the screen, it's issuing an LCD reset command, uh, which with older kits would result in some pretty massive frame drops or f screen tearing. Uh, look up some of my older videos on like the Freckle Shack if you're more curious on that. The original version of the Freckle Shack was notorious for this. Um, I believe the McWill kit had some problems too. These are of course Game Boy Color kits. Um, well, those are those are the only kits coming to me offhand. I, I know there were more otherwise this test probably wouldn't exist but long story short this kit is handling it with uh, flying colors. That is exactly what we want to see. Let's go back to the menu. Uh, oh, might as well pull up the gradient test because this is DMG. We only have the four colors. And that's what you get, but at least they got the four colors correct this time. So we have white, light gray, dark gray, and black. I wish the light gray and dark gray were a little bit uh, more separate, but that's good enough. Um, I just wish the contrast were a little bit better. And of course, this contrast wheel does absolutely nothing. I didn't think it was hooked up to anything and adjusting it does that. I mean, it, I guess it's a fiddle toy now. Uh, we have the touch sensor. Where we can cycle through brightness levels. We have one, two, three, four, five. And so if we go back to two, where'd it go? Three, four, five. And then we'll do a power cycle. I believe it is going to reset to the highest brightness on every power cycle. Yep. So it does not recall settings, but that's not too big a deal because the highest brightness is probably what you're going to want to use anyway because this screen is not as bright as some of the other ones. Uh, not that it's a problem, just not as bright. Let's go ahead and go into the 240p test suite, which I'm fairly certain runs on the DMG. Yes. Or 144p, I guess. And go into the infamous shadow sprite test. Uh, so, the reason I like looking at this one is because it gives us a little bit of an insight into how the original Game Boy itself works, uh, in that the Game Boy does not support transparency. There's just no way to do transparency on the original Game Boy. Uh, I believe that might have been fixed with later models, like the Game Boy Advance specifically, but don't quote me on that. Um, but regardless, the uh, original game devs found a really clever workaround for that, um, and that involved taking advantage of some of the deficiencies of the original screen, in that the original screen just has horrible pixel response times, so you can just flicker something rapidly, 60 times a second, off, on, off, on, off, on, and that results in a bit of a transparency effect because the uh, pixel response is terrible. You don't see the flickering on the original screen. Now, I don't know how well my camera is picking this up, but we do get quite a bit of flickering here. Um, the That's the bad news. The good news 
is that the flickering is uh, it's very consistent um, and there are no leftover artifacts when you move it around. With some of the other kits, you might get like a, a shadow. Like let's say I leave it on his ear long enough uh, while it's flickering and then move it over to the left side of the face, I'll see flickering on the ear and where the current sprite should be. In this particular case, this is ideal performance. The single only thing they could do better is if they could correct this flickering and give us a little bit of a transparency result. Um, but that sort of thing requires some pretty uh, complicated algorithms that I don't really expect to see in something like this. Be nice to have, but it's not really a thing. And by the way, if, you're, if you've seen my ITA video kit, that wasn't an algorithm thing. That was just the screen itself. Um, I'll get more into that later, but I was mistaken on that. Anyway, let us see some of the other tests. Like if we look at the grid, we can see we have the full screen area. Nothing's cut off. If we look at the linearity test, we can see we are one to one or close enough. Um, what this does is this gives us a circle. And as long as the circle is actually a circle and not an oval, it means the aspect ratio is correct. In this case, it is. We can go check out, uh, what am I thinking of? That's not it. I don't have it in this version. Yeah, of course they don't work on a Game Boy or Game Boy Pocket. <laughs> uh, there is supposed to be another test that gives us alternating lines every other pixel so we can make sure that we're getting the scaling properly. But I guess we don't have it in this version. We can do lag testing, scroll testing. Oh, that's what I was looking for. Okay. Cool. So with this thing, if you zoom in here, which might not be able to do, I'm filming in 4K60. YouTube compression is probably going to do a number on this. But if you set that to full resolution and zoom in, if my camera were to focus, you'd be able to see that we are getting a nice um, integer scaling. There's no weird blurriness. Um, each original Game Boy Pixel is being reproduced as two pixels or four pixels on this new screen to give us a nice 2x scaling. Um, looks looks pretty darn good. Pretty typical of the other kits. I've done some testing on the uh, MGB version of this kit, and since this looked to be pretty much the same kit, I didn't expect to be surprised with the performance. It, it looks fantastic. I'm fine with this. Completely, completely fine. Oh, we don't need a tone generator. The audio on this thing is going to be garbage anyway. Uh, oh, I can just reset it. And so if you want to see that shadow sprite test in like a uh, quote unquote real world example, I can fire up Zelda or I guess Link's Awakening. The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, a long name, whatever. You know what I mean. We'll go here, we'll pop over, and we can look at this dude's chain. Some pretty significant flickering effects, but you'll notice as I scroll across the screen, there's no weird undo artifacts. The single only problem that I'm seeing is that this is flickering instead of being purely transparent, but we already went over that. And then the other, you could consider it an issue if you want, but you see that top uh, row of pixels is getting cut off. That's a game problem, not a backlight kit problem. It's just kind of hidden on original unmodded screens because the screens just sucked and you couldn't see it before. <laughs> but that's, that's not a problem with the backlight kit and there's absolutely nothing that can be done on the backlight kit level to fix that. That's just a game issue. But anyway, passes with flying colors, I say. Let's go ahead and reset again. And of course you see it's booting perfectly fine off my flash cart, which means this is not a very power hungry kit. But then again, I do have, I am cheating a little bit with the batteries I have in this thing. The story might be different with some nickel metal hydrides, but I do not have four of them that are freshly charged or we would test it. Uh, why is there a G code file on here? Okay. 
Uh, I think that's basically all we can do from here. So yeah, I guess uh, let me go ahead and wrap up this video here. I don't know that there's much else I can do as far as testing goes. Um, if you're into Game Boys, this is certainly a uh, pretty decent kit. And by Game Boys, of course, I mean not the genre of uh, handheld consoles. I mean original Game Boy consoles. The DMG. Yeah, this is a great kit. Um, from my tests with the other versions of this kit, specifically the Game Boy Color and Game Boy Pocket version, I know it's a little bit more power efficient than the Q5 versions of these kits, and I have no doubt that is going to be the same thing here. Unfortunately, I have not tested it. I probably won't test it off screen, so I'm not going to make any promises there. Um, but like I said, without a before and after number, it's really hard to get any meaningful data, and this Game Boy was just so messed up that I wasn't going to get a meaningful before number. So, unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, now that I'm, I guess, playing it, the start and select aren't bad. It could use some improvement. I don't know if that's something specific to my kit, but, eh, it is what it is. Um, overall... There is one egregious thing that I have to mention because it's just something I see when I look at stuff like this and once I see it, I can't unsee it, so I want to point it out to all of you guys. The screen's off-center. That's my biggest problem with the kit. That's, that's it. Um, you could fix that by not using the bracket they provide and just aligning it manually with whatever screen lens you want to use, but it being a cloud game store kit, you want to use their lenses because the printing on them has always just been so phenomenal, and this is no exception. So, I mean, if you want the easiest possible install, you know, follow their directions, use their bracket, use their lens, and just live with it being off-center. And for what it's worth, Game Boys do have a history of being off-center. Here's a perfectly stocked Game Boy. Look at the uh, left bezel compared to the right bezel on this SP. Go ahead, go ahead and check yours. I'll I'll sit here and wait. Um, yeah, it's it's a thing, and once you notice it, it's basically impossible to stop noticing. But as long as you're able to look past that sort of issue, then yeah, this is a fantastic kit. I'm actually really pleased with the performance. Uh, I don't recommend installing in a uh, IPS ready shell, which is what I did here, but that's what I had laying around, and the original shell was gross enough that I didn't want to deal with that. Plus, broken screw post, so that's what it is. But anyway, I guess it's that time again. Um, gotta give a quick shout out to Retro Game Repair Shop for once again sending me a uh, kit to play with. I believe this was a review sample from Cloud Game Store that they sent to Retro Game Repair Shop, so it's not exactly the retail version. Um, I don't know that there will be any differences Usually when I get my hands on these kits, uh, if they are like retail samples, they're basically the last one before they just print dozens of them. And so the vast majority of the time, it's the exact same thing. If nothing else, the performance is the same, but maybe a few things like surface finish are a little bit different. Um, like here's an example, the speaker I had to resolder at the beginning, that might've been hand soldered with this kit. And it might have just been, you know, thrown together by the kit seller and just shipped out, whereas the final version is going to be put together on an assembly line with people who are a little bit more comfortable soldering. Um, I don't know. Your mileage may vary. I can't, I obviously can't make any promises, but if you order one of these things and the speaker doesn't work because you have the same problem I did, well, then talk to the vendor. They'll, they'll help you out. If you can solder, it's an easy enough fix. If you can't, I'm sorry. Um, sorry about your bad luck. <laughs> uh, it is pretty easy to learn. I recommend a solder practice kit for that sort of thing. But I, I do like that of all the uh, original Game Boy kits, though, this one doesn't require soldering. Every other kit I've seen, oh, I think those are pretty rare in the wild. Um, I don't know, I haven't played this game in a long enough time. Let's just throw a Master Ball at it. Uh, 
yeah, no, it's a good kit. I'm very pleased with it. I will throw some links down in the description. Uh, I don't know if Retro Game Repair Shop is going to be carrying these. They probably are. Um, and by the time I get this video up anyway, that will have been a problem that is resolved. So just, just ignore my rambling. Um, check the description for links. I always try and throw some good info in there. And uh, if y'all have any questions, I do try to read all the comments, and I do try to get to them when I can. There's no way I can weaken this thing. <laughs> um, I want it, though. I want the Pikachu. I don't have one. There's no Pokeball. Um, yeah. No, it's good. Oh, son of a gun. We're going to capture this thing, and then I'll kill the video. Even though I'm just playing off my EverDrive and not my actual cartridge. You know, screw it. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to save it anyway. There you go. There is the Cloud Game Store 2.6 inch IPS kit for the DMG. Um, I dig it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch y'all next time.